Hello viewers, I am Dr. Robiul. I work as a lecturer of pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. Today's topic is Von Willebrand's disease. In this video, first we will try to define Von Willebrand's disease, then we will discuss briefly about Von Willebrand factor, followed by pathogenesis, types, clinical feature, laboratory diagnosis and treatment of Von Willebrand's disease. Okay, so let's begin. First question, what is Von Willebrand's disease? How can we define Von Willebrand's disease? So, von Willebrand's disease is the most common hereditary coagulation disorder occurring due to qualitative or quantitative deficiency of von Willebrand factor. Okay, now don't get scared. A lot of my students tend to run away when I try to teach them definition. I even have to show them teddy bear to keep them calm. So, look, I am showing you a teddy bear. So, don't worry because I will explain this definition line by line. So, what did I said? What did I say in the first line of this definition? Von Willebrand's disease is the most common hereditary coagulation disorder. Now, what do we mean by hereditary disorder? Hereditary disorder means it is a disease that can be transmitted to the offspring from the parents via gene. Okay, so that is hereditary disorder. And here we are having problem in gene responsible for producing von Willebrand factor. And in the second part of the definition, I said it is occurring due to qualitative or quantitative deficiency of the von Willebrand factor and it is an autosomal dominant disease. Now what do we mean by autosomal dominant disease? Recall that in every diploid cell we have 23 pairs of chromosome. Out of those 23 pairs of chromosome, one pair of chromosome is sex chromosome and the remaining 22 pairs of chromosome are called autosome and they are given names like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. up to chromosome number 22. And when there is defect in those autosome, that defect can be autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive. And say for example, this is a cell, this is the nucleus of the cell and inside the nucleus we have chromatin and uh, we have zoomed in the chromatin here so this is actually a zoomed in version of say for example that part and actually we have a lot of chromosome inside the nucleus but I am focusing here on autosome number 12 recall that we have one autosome number 12 that came from the father and another autosome number 12 that came from mother in every diploid cell. And when there is autosomal dominant defect, if either one of these autosomes are defective, that will result in disease. Say for example, in the autosome number 12 that came from the father, inside that autosome number 12 we have DNA and inside those DNA we have gene and say for example the gene that is responsible for encoding von Willebrand factor which is in fact located in autosome number 12 that gene got mutated in the autosome number 12 that came from the father the autosome number 12 that came from the mother is normal however since this is an autosomal dominant disease so even with one mutated gene it will produce the disease okay so that is meant by autosomal dominant disease so now that we have defined von Willebrand's disease and explained the definition now we will move on to the next topic 
and that is what is von Willebrand factor. Recall that von Willebrand disease occurs due to deficiency of von Willebrand factor. Now von Willebrand factor is a glycoprotein. The main function of von Willebrand factor is to help in platelet adhesion that we will discuss after a while and also to stabilize factor 8. Recall that factor 8 is a clotting factor. It is needed in the intrinsic pathway to activate factor 10. And the way how von Willebrand factor stabilizes factor 8 is that if factor 8 was free in the blood, uh, it would last for only 2.4 hours. But when that factor 8 is bound with von Willebrand factor and makes a complex. That complex can last for up to 12 hours in the blood. Okay, so that will enhance its uh, function. So those were the two functions of the von Willebrand factor glycoprotein. Number one helps in platelet adhesion and number two it stabilizes factor 8. Now you may be asking then what is the difference between von Willebrand factor and clotting factor 8? And there are a lot of difference and this is high yield uh, question for your written examination. You may have a question what is the difference between von Willebrand factor and uh, clotting factor 8? So the first thing is how they are produced. Von Willebrand factor is produced in three cells. They, they are endothelial cells. If I want to be more specific, they are produced in the Weibel Palladi body that is a special structure found inside the endothelial cell. Recall that Weibel Palladi body also contains P-selectin which is important for inflammation. Okay. Now von Willebrand factor is also produced from megakaryocyte and also in the alpha granules of the platelet. After production, the von Willebrand factor, uh, some of it goes to the blood and it can make complex with factor 8 and some remains in the subendothelial collagen to help in platelet adhesion whenever there is some vascular damage. Okay. So that was the um, first point, von Willebrand factor is produced in these cells and clotting factor 8 is produced in the liver. If I want to be more specific, it is produced, factor 8 is produced in the sinusoidal endothelial cells and also in the Kupfer cells of the liver. Recall that Kupfer cell is a stellate macrophage found in the liver and factor 8 is also produced in the tubular cells of the kidney. So that's the first difference. We see that uh, von Willebrand factor and clotting factor 8 are not produced in the same cell. They are produced in different cells of different site. The second difference is the gene responsible for encoding von Willebrand factor is located in chromosome number 12 and the gene responsible for encoding factor 8 is located in the X chromosome. Recall that factor 8 deficiency um, due to X chromosome problem will lead to hemophilia and I have a separate video on hemophilia so you can uh, watch that video if you uh, want to know more information. Okay, so that was the second uh, difference between von Willebrand factor and factor 8 the gene for von Willebrand factor located in chromosome number 12 and gene that is responsible for encoding clotting factor 8 is located in X chromosome. And the last difference is in the function. I have already mentioned the function of von Willebrand factor and the function of factor 8 is to activate clotting factor 10 in the intrinsic pathway. So now that we have discussed the difference between von Willebrand factor and clotting factor 8. Now we will move on to the next topic and that is the pathogenesis of von Willebrand's disease. Now the best way to understand the pathogenesis of von Willebrand disease is to recall the mechanism of hemostasis first. 
If we can understand how hemostasis occurs, the pathogenesis of von Willebrand disease will be very easy to understand. So what do we mean by hemostasis? Recall that hemostasis means spontaneous arrest of bleeding. And to understand about hemostasis, you can see that I have drawn a simple diagram here. So this is a blood vessel. This is the lumen of the blood vessel. And these are the lining endothelial cell. Okay, so this is a this is one endothelial cell, this is another endothelial cell. Inside the endothelial cell, this one and this one, these are the nucleus. Beneath the endothelial cell drawn in the blue in this diagram, this one is the subendothelial collagen. Same here, this is the subendothelial collagen. Okay. And beyond the subendothelial collagen drawn in red is the muscle layer or tunica media of the blood vessel. And beyond that tunica media, the outermost layer that is the adventitia. Okay, so these are the uh, layers of blood vessel and inside this is the lumen of the blood vessel. Now look what has happened here. You can see that uh, this part of the blood vessel got damaged, okay, and that has resulted in bleeding. Now our uh, body will try to stop the bleeding and uh, it will do that by the process of hemostasis. So what will our body do? Well, initially there will be vasoconstriction. The blood vessel of the affected area will constrict to reduce blood loss and then hemostasis will begin and as you can see in the subendothelial collagen we have a lot of von Willebrand factor when there is damage to blood vessel the endothelium is lost and the subendothelial von Willebrand factors are exposed and platelet the circulating platelets will bind with these um, von Willebrand factor with their receptor that is glycoprotein GP1B located on the surface of the platelet. Okay, so what have we said so far? There was vascular damage, the vascular damage exposed the subendothelial collagen where von Willebrand factors were located and the von Willebrand factors act as crosslink between the subendothelial collagen and the glycoprotein GP1B of the platelet and that is known as platelet adhesion okay so this is the platelet drawn in the red and you can see these are the glycoproteins of the platelet they are labeled GP1B and by using this glycoprotein platelet uh, binds with von Willebrand factors and forms a crosslink with the subendothelial collagen. Now once these steps have taken place the platelets become activated then the platelets will express another type of glycoprotein which are known as GP 2B3A and that glycoprotein will um, aggregate other platelets okay and the way other platelets will be aggregated using this receptor is with the help of fibrinogen okay so the platelets will become activated after platelet adhesion then they will express glycoprotein GP 2B3A, the glycoproteins will bind with fibrinogen and use fibrinogen as crosslink to aggregate further platelet. And this is known as platelet aggregation. And by this mechanism, platelet plugs will be formed. But that platelet plug is unstable. So later we have to convert this fibrinogen into fibrin and that is done um, by the coagulation cascade and that is the 
area where factor 8 is needed in the intrinsic pathway of the coagulation cascade. So that was an overview of the uh, hemostasis mechanism and by the way when the uh, fibrinogen is converted to fibrin that is uh, when we say that there is formation of a stable platelet plug. So the reason for telling you all this mechanism about hemostasis is to make you understand what will happen when we have deficiency either uh, in quality or in quantity of von Willebrand factor. So what will happen when there is deficiency? Recall that von Willebrand factor was first needed for platelet adhesion. Okay, so when there is deficiency of von Willebrand factor, platelet adhesion will not take place. And if platelet adhesion do not take place, bleeding time will increase. Okay, so that was the first pathogenesis. What will happen next? Recall that von Willebrand factor is also needed to stabilize factor 8. As a matter of fact, von Willebrand factor and factor 8, they form a complex in the circulating blood and that stabilizes factor 8 up to 12 hours. Okay, so when there is deficiency of von Willebrand factor, there will be also problem in stabilizing the factor 8. Okay, and that will result in increased partial thromboplastin time or increased PTT. Okay, so these were the main mechanism by which von Willebrand disease used to cause the problems. So now that we have discussed about the pathogenesis of von Willebrand disease, now we will move on and discuss briefly about the types of von Willebrand disease. So there are three major types of von Willebrand's disease. They are type 1, type 2 and type 3. Now the most common um, variant of von Willebrand disease is the type 1 variant. Here there may be mild to moderate decrease in the plasma von Willebrand factor level. In a lot of your textbooks you will see that in type 1 von Willebrand disease there is 50% von Willebrand factor activity in the plasma. And one thing you have to remember in type 1 von Willebrand disease the synthesis of von Willebrand factor is normal. However, the release of its multimer is inhibited. Recall that in the circulation, the von Willebrand factors are seen as multimers. Okay, so say for example, this is a multimer of von Willebrand factor. We have a lot of uh, von Willebrand factor here in a group like a multimer. So in type 1 von Willebrand disease, the synthesis of von Willebrand factor that I had mentioned that used to occur in these cells, the endothelial cell, the megakaryocyte and the platelet, the synthesis is normal but the release uh, in the multimer is inhibited. Okay, so that is type 1. In type 2 von Willebrand disease, the plasma level of von Willebrand factor is normal or near normal but their functionality is defective. Okay, so that is type 2 von Willebrand disease and type 2 von Willebrand disease is less common and then we are moving on moving on to the type 3 von Willebrand's disease and that is very rare disease but when present that is also the most severe variety of von Willebrand's disease in type 3 von Willebrand disease there is almost no detectable von Willebrand factor in the blood and also factor 8 level may be decreased okay so these were the three major types of von Willebrand's disease and uh, always remember that um, the type 1 is the most important one and that is the common one type 2 is rare and type 3 is extremely rare so now that we have discussed briefly about the types of von Willebrand's disease now we will move on and discuss the clinical features of von Willebrand's disease. Now since 
Von Willebrand's disease is an autosomal dominant disorder, so both male and female can get affected. In majority of the cases, the clinical feature will include mild bleeding tendency, say for example easy bruising, epistaxis or nose bleeding, particularly after an episode of upper respiratory tract infection. There may be prolonged bleeding lasting for up to 36 hours after minor laceration or tooth extraction. In severe cases of von Willebrand disease, there may be spontaneous bleeding, menorrhagia, etc. And these group of patients will be at risk of surgery and trauma. So uh, if any surgery is needed in those patients uh, who has the severe variety of von Willebrand's disease, we have to take special measures to avoid, to avoid those um, bleeding complications. So now that we have discussed the clinical features of von Willebrand's disease, now we will move on to the laboratory findings. So I will now mention the important laboratory findings of von Willebrand's disease. The first one is bleeding time. Since von Willebrand factor was needed for platelet adhesion, so when there is deficiency of von Willebrand factor, platelet adhesion will not occur properly and as a result, bleeding time will increase. Okay, so there will be increased bleeding time. Now what will happen to partial thromboplastin time? Recall that von Willebrand factor was also needed to stabilize factor 8 and factor 8 is needed in the intrinsic pathway of the coagulation cascade. So there will be problem in the intrinsic pathway and whenever there is any problem in the intrinsic pathway of the coagulation cascade, partial thromboplastin time gets increased. So the PTT will get increased. Okay? Now what will happen to prothrombin time? Now prothrombin time is increased when there is some problem in the extrinsic pathway of the coagulation cascade. Since here we have no problem in the extrinsic pathway of the coagulation cascade, so prothrombin time will remain normal. Okay, so prothrombin time is normal. What will happen to the von Willebrand factor level in the plasma? This is obvious. Von Willebrand factor level in the plasma will decrease. And one important test that you have to know for your examinations is the Ristocetin test. In von Willebrand disease, there will be defective platelet adhesion and as a result, platelet aggregation will also get hampered. So since there is less platelet aggregation, so there will be abnormal Ristocetin test. So now that we have discussed the common laboratory findings of von Willebrand disease. Now we will move on to the last topic of today's discussion and that is the treatment. So the treatment options include desmopressin acetate, that is the drug that increases release of von Willebrand factor from its storage site. In case of females we can also use the estrogen of oral contraceptive pill that also increases the release of von Willebrand factor from storage sites. However, for severe cases of von Willebrand's disease, we have to infuse the patient with plasma concentrate of recombinant factor 8 and von Willebrand factor. Okay, so this concludes today's discussion on von Willebrand's disease. And always remember that von Willebrand disease will always uh, lead to questions from hemophilia because you know hemophilia and von Willebrand disease both are disorders of coagulation uh, system. One is autosomal dominant and hemophilia is X-linked recessive. 
so uh, always study these two diseases together to um, get a good understanding about their difference and I also have a video on hemophilia and you can also uh, have a look at that video in my channel too so that's all for today thank you for watching this video if you like my videos do subscribe and comment in the comments section below so that's all until next week take care and stay blessed thank you